Yo, what is up guys? It is Josh back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own transitions in both Adobe After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. Quick, before I actually get into the video though, I just want to say a lot of you guys, about 70% are not subscribed to the channel yet. So make sure to drop us up. It is 100% free for you guys to do and you can change your mind at a later date. But with that being said, all the links and presets will be in the description as well as the timestamps if you want to skip ahead to a specific part of the video or a specific editing software. Hope you guys do enjoy and I'll see you guys on my PC. All right guys, so I'm on my PC now. The first editing software I'm actually going to cover is DaVinci Resolve. The first thing you want to do is just press new project and I'm just going to do transition samples, but I'm going to name it. You can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and then what we're going to do once we get in there is we're going to go into the edit tab, go to file, go to project settings, and then we're just going to change the timeline frame rate to 60, just so it sets the playback frame rate to 60 as well. Make sure your resolution is 1920 by 1080, which is just the standard high quality resolution in DaVinci Resolve and for most editing softwares. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go open up our file explorer and uh, I'm just going to find any two clips on my PC. Uh, the main focus of this video is transitions, so we're not going to be doing effects or anything. I'm literally going to get the first two clips i see right here we're going to drag it into the timeline we're just going to cut it up just a bit and then we'll just toss in the second clip cut that down on the other side as well just so we have something that looks like this obviously if you were editing your montage you'd have a lot more clips you'd have separation points but uh all you want to do is just find the main separation point in your clips uh that would be from one clip to the other you can tell when you see you know it go from one clip to the other it's it's self-explanatory um the first thing we're going to do after doing that is we're going to go to the effects library right here go to effects drag in an adjustment clip that actually overlaps between these two clips right here go to the middle go into your fusion tab and i'll actually show you how we can manually make these transitions all you need for this video is sapphire plugin so make sure to go check that out i'll have a link to sapphire's website in the description but uh, i'm not saying anything but if you do look up on youtube sapphire for free uh, you should be able to find that but uh, for legal reasons i actually pay for my plugins uh, all we're going to do is click anywhere here press control space in your uh, on your keyboard sorry and we're just going to look up blur mo curves that is a sapphire plugin just press add and it will actually show up in our kind of grid right here we're just going to click on the node while pressing shift drag it on the line right here or an alternative to this is just you double click here get rid of the line and you can manually drag it to the left and the right just so it connects like that uh, just using your arrow keys you can kind of navigate on this clip right here uh, on the first frame that we actually have the separation point the uh the first transition i'm going to cover is a z distance uh, transition which is like a zoom in or out transition so for this we're going to keyframe our z distance let's say if we want to have a zoom out transition we're just going to set it to 1.4 which i i know that it's out right here trust me um it does make sense if you do think about it uh this will be the zoom in transition sorry and what we're going to do is we're going to go one frame before this point right here and we're going to make it 0.7 just so we can see it kind of has this motion blur thing also always set your wrap x and y to reflect because it'll make it look weird if you don't have it it'll just be like black around the outside um and then we're just going to go 10 frames back right here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's actually go 12 so one two and then we're going to set our z distance back to one which is the standard z distance uh, right there and then we're gonna go 12 frames after right here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve set it to one as well and then what we're gonna do now we can see that we kind of have a zoom in but it's super linear trust me once we edit the graph it'll look a lot better so bring up your spline select the blur mode curves right here press this little arrow thing here and that'll actually zoom us in on the graph click on the graph anywhere press Control a on your keyboard press s That'll ease the curves right here, and you're just gonna uh, follow along, kind of copy the graph that I show you right here. Just do something like this, and what that'll do is it'll have a nice little zoom in transition, just like that. And if you wanted to do a zoom out transition instead, you just reverse these values to 0.7, reverse this to 1.4, and then obviously you would fix the the uh, graph accordingly. So that would look something like this. Flip this around and uh, should look look like that. Perfect. And uh, also, if we wanted to do, let's say, a position transition, so that would be something like a left, right, up, down. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a up, down transition kind of thing. We're gonna find the separation point in our clips, which is right here. 
So we're gonna do this one right here. We're gonna keyframe the, our shift X on this point. And sorry, not the shift X, I just said up. So I don't know what I'm thinking right now. Uh, obviously X is left, right, sh Y is uh, up, down. So we're gonna keyframe our shift uh, Y on the separation point at point five. And I don't know why I just added a text 3D, but that just happened. Uh, we're gonna go one frame back, keyframe our shift Y, the opposite of the uh, one that we just did. So it's gonna be negative 0.5. Then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Keyframe our shift Y back to zero. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Keyframe our shift Y back to zero. Open up our spline, select the blur mode curves, press this arrow thing right here, click on it, control A, S, and then the exact same graph. It's literally the exact same for all transitions. So uh, if you're doing a rotation, if you're doing anything with position, it's always the same kind of snap graph that uh, we've been doing for this. So we can see that it does a movement transition just like that. Super clean looking, snaps onto the clip. But those are the two main kinds of transitions that you can actually use in your Fortnite montages. Uh, you just do the same exact process if you wanted to do Shift X, Shift Y, uh, rotation even. Rotation, the values for that are actually going to be 90 and 180, just so you are aware of that. And, uh, or sorry, 90 and negative 90. I don't know why I said 180, but it's 90, negative 90, and then negative 90 and 90. Uh, depending on which way you actually want to rotate your clip and then for all of the movement ones on davinci resolve it is 0.5 on either side 0.5 and negative 5 depending on what way you'd like it to go mess around with the values and then mess around with your graph Tr just try to copy what i did for my graph and you should be good to go um, but just like that you've actually made your own transitions i'll leave some presets in the description if you want to just check those line it up with what you've actually created and try to uh, compare the differences and uh, similarities just so you can check that out hope you guys enjoy though i'll see you guys inside of after effects if you're gonna be sticking around for that and uh, yeah see you guys over there all right guys so once we're inside of adobe after effects a brand new project what we're gonna do is just we're going to grab any two clips that we have on our pc so i'm just gonna grab the first two that i see and all we're gonna do here is we're just going to uh, cut them down so press Control shift d and then drag in the second one, kind of find that separation point, control shift D, just so we have a little space to work with. Obviously, if you're just messing around with transitions, you do this, but if you are like inside of a montage timeline, you just find a separation point in your clips. You know, if you're doing it on one clip, you're doing it on the first clip, second clip, doesn't really matter. Um, just find any separation point between two clips, just something like this. We're gonna click on the top clip, we're gonna press control alt Y on our keyboard, and then we're just gonna kind of come on either side and press uh, control shift D and that should just cut cut it down just so we have an adjustment layer to work with which is what we're going to apply the transition to um this frame isn't looking too good for the transition so i'm just gonna kind of move it around uh all we gotta do here make sure you have your sapphire plugins i'll uh, have a link to sapphire's website or sorry boris's website in the description if you want <clears throat> you can look it up on youtube uh, sapphire plugins for free after effects i did not actually say that i do pay for my plugins uh, for legal reasons but um all we gotta do is just go to your effects and presets on the right side once you actually have your sapphire plugins downloaded look up blurmo curves drag that on your adjustment layer and this is actually what we're going to be using for our transitions um keyframe or z distance the first kind of transition i'm going to show you is a zoom in out um, so if we want to do a zoom in transition for example we're going to change the value on the separation point to 1.4 and it will actually zoom it out i know that doesn't make sense but trust me it will in a second um, all we got to do is press fnl that'll actually if you have a 60 percent keyboard that's like your arrow keys for moving around pretty much and uh, we're gonna change our value one frame before the separation point to 0 0.7, which is a zoom in value. As you can see, we're gonna go 12 frames back from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Keyframe this back down at one. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 keyframe this at one let me quickly explain why you actually have these two different values in the middle so pretty much we can see that it does zoom into this 0.7 value and then at the 1.4 that'll make it seem like it's zooming into the next clip i know once we have the graph edited it'll look a lot better though trust me um, all we're gonna do select the keyframes right here press f9 on your keyboard if you're using a 60 percent you can press fn and nine um, and then you're just gonna go into your graph right here select this uh, keyframe right here and just copy this graph that I'm about to show you just do something like this 
where it kind of just snaps to the transition itself just like that and we can see you know once we actually have this graph edited it looks a lot more clean than it did before just because we have the kind of curves edited the way that we'd like them to be obviously if we wanted something different we just switch these values around and just like that we kind of have a zoom out but the graph is messed up obviously because we changed the values so we would have to fix that and then that's literally the values for our zoom out transition which would be the 1.4 first and then the 0.7 on the actual separation point and that's the first kind of transition you can do the zoom in obviously if you want to do something with positioning like a left right up down uh, you'd mess around with the shift x or shift y x is left or right y is up down so i'm going to show you an up down real quick um, for the shift y on the separation point just make it 500 and then on the keyframe before you're going to make it negative 500 i believe yeah negative 500 we're going to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 frames back keyframe the value at zero and then we're going to go 12 to the right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 keyframe the value at zero press u on your keyboard to view your keyframes f9 graph editor and then just do the exact same graph that we use for all of our transitions rotation zoom in position doesn't matter it's literally the same graph and we can see that transition is sliding super nicely across the screen for your fortnite montages if you wanted it to be you know down to up you'd switch the values around like this you go back into your graph and you would just fix your curves just like that and it would work the exact same if you want to do kind of a down transition i believe i believe that's yeah i don't know is, is it a down let me know down below i don't know what it is considered honestly i just drag on whatever i think looks the best or i mess around with the settings based on that i don't really know the names um but then if you want to do i'll quickly show you a rotation as well just because they're super clean and i know a cool little trick if you want to do something nice with a rotation transition just keyframe your rotate value at 90 on the separation point and then right before i think you want to do negative 90 if i'm not wrong and then right here we're gonna go 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 we'll do 15 frames and we're gonna make this 360 i think i believe that's what we're looking for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 this goes down to zero let me quickly see what this looks like as a uh, normal graph. Just So just go into your graph. Okay, that's very strange. I don't know why that's looking like that. Okay, we'll just change it to zero on this side. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, that should be fine. I don't know what I was thinking when I was doing this graph, but... It's all good. We're just going to uh, do the graph right here, just like we do with all the other ones. Okay, yeah, so sorry, it wasn't 360. It's zero on either side. Uh, my mistake. Just select the keyframes again. But something I normally do for my rotation transitions, if you want to have it look kind of cool, you can bring this first value up a bit. So what that does is it rotates it to the, uh, the uh, opposite side, like this, and then it brings it around. I don't know if you guys kind of find that movement cool. But it just gives it the uh, thing a bit more movement. You can do it on the other side as well. Sometimes it does look kind of... I don't know how to explain it, but... It just kind of has this, you know... We can see we're rotating to the left. But if you can see... Let me quickly increase the resolution. You can see we're going kind of on a right rotation to start. And then bringing it around, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can make it excessive you can make it kind of slight not noticeable but uh it definitely makes your thing look a lot better if you are doing that hope you guys did enjoy this though i'll have some presets down below if you guys want to mess around with that and compare it to what you've actually created yourself i just thought i'd show you how to actually make them yourself versus showing you how to apply presets wouldn't really be practical but learning how to do transitions is one of the most useful things you can actually know when you're doing Fortnite montages because if you do have good transitions, you have good flow, you're literally going to be a really good editor automatically. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy the video though. Like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to see a future tutorial, let me know down below in the comments. I'm open to ideas from you guys and I'll see you guys in the video. Peace out.